Hi there, uh, welcome to the workbench. Um, today's video is going to be talking through uh, how to assemble one of our, or our typical Planet Industrials kit. Um, multimedia kit where we have, uh, usually have a 3D printed part uh, and some etched metal parts and, uh, and you provide a ready to run chassis. Um, I thought I've used a similar format in other videos. Uh, hopefully it's going to guide us through without me waffling too much. Um, and uh, you'll all get a chance to learn something. Um, if you've got any questions and things like that, it gives you a chance to ask them as well, specific to the product. In this case, we're actually going to be looking at our new kit, which is the uh, motor rail simplex. It's the 14 ton um, example, the standard gauge example. And it's been designed to fit on the Hornby Ruston uh, 48DS chassis and literally is a push fit. I mean, literally that unscrews from the Hornby model and it will screw straight into ours. Um, and then to decorate this otherwise skeleton-like structure, uh, we've got some etched um, nickel silver parts. So these have got the, uh, the rivet head and bolt head detail, hinges, doors, things like that already formed into the metal. Uh, and what this does is it gives us a chance to get a really good finish without you having to sort of worry too much about the 3D printing surface. Um, but it also allows uh, you to have a, a structurally rigid and square base to start from so you're not worried about soldering things up to get things square so uh, and of course you also know the chassis is going to fit straight off so uh, without too much uh, further ado I'm going to try and walk through this um, uh, without talking too much uh, and let's see how we get on um, but before we start I need to clear this bench bring the camera a bit closer uh, and finish drinking my coffee Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at, uh, I suppose, what we get, what you will get in the kit. Uh, you'll get a, a 3D printed body shell. You'll note under sat on the underneath there are preformed holes. These are uh, tapered holes that will accept the uh, the Hornby screws. Okay, so the Hornby chassis will push fit into that towards the end. Uh, what I would recommend is I've I've done notes on this one is give it a good test fit. Um, what you through the printing process you sometimes get a build up of. Uh, a sort of furry substance on the inside of the, the, the fit, uh, faces. It's worth just cleaning that off uh, and you can just use a hobby blade and literally just very gently scrape at it until you've got a, a smoother surface. Um, and then just check, it, it can be a tight push fit, but it, it needs to be uh, obviously not so tight that you can't get the body on and off. Um, and do be careful of the of the cap structure itself. Once you've got some etched, etched metal on here, that's very strong. Uh, but as it is, as it comes, it's uh, it's quite delicate. But all is not lost. If you do happen to break it, this material uh, snaps very cleanly. And so you can super glue, usually super glue it back together um, without too much problem. And of course, you can hide any of that damage with the, the etched metal parts. OK, so there's our 3D print. Um, all of our kits will come with uh, a sheet of etched metal. In this case, we've used nickel silver. Um, and what we've got is a sort of variety of parts in here. That I'm going to cut out now and prepare. And we've got the cab sides, uh, bonnet sides. This is the bonnet top, cab roof, cab front and back, uh, bonnet front here, and then the buffer beams. Okay. Obviously, depending on which kit you're looking at, uh, you'll have a different selection. That is not sure. Be fairly clear in the instructions. Um, and in this case, I've got the the Hornby chassis. And what I've done, all I've done here is literally take the the Hornby body off. I think this was actually one of the the whiskey special edition, which had nice uh, cream coloured rims on the wheel so I've actually scraped them off as well okay um, at this stage so right at the beginning I'm going to say you don't always want to do this and um, but for the purposes of what I'm doing it's going to help me to cut all the bits out at once you might find you want to cut the bits out as you go and there's a couple of options for cutting parts out from a friend um, if you've got a full uh, thickness piece like this you'll find the little tabs at the edge I'm going to be able to see these anyway but the little tabs you'll find are half etched and so uh, if you had a pair of snips, I use this pair off an old pen knife. Uh, you can snip through the fret at the edge, get your cutters in and come along and cut that. So for example, we can cut there, he says, <laughs> uh, and then slide it, the blade along and then just cut at the edge, right? And you can go around and cut like that. And that works works really well for, for pieces that are full etched. But what you can find with the using a snips like this is that you can um, bend the edge. So. Uh, what I recommend is if you've got a half etched surface is that you use uh, a blade and rather than using a cutting mat, I find if you use a cutting mat, what can happen is as you cut down and um, because the cutting mat's soft, the metal deforms into that. And so you'll curve the edge of that etch 
Instead, I've got a piece of uh, old MDF. I mean, other materials are available, but a hard surface, or a much harder surface. I use this when I'm soldering, so I don't damage my uh, my bench. But I find this is a much better surface to cut against. And so to cut these parts out, um, I'm left-handed, so you're just gonna have to forgive me here, but you, you push the, uh, the blade up against the fret edge, not against the part. So I wanna cut out along the edges of the, the tab not against the piece itself, right? And carry on. Okay, so that's your alternative. And you can see actually the fret deforming slightly as we do that. Okay, so uh, there's that one there. Okay, oh, and I forgot that one. Okay, so that's that piece cut out. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna cut this piece out. Uh, carry on cutting this piece out. Uh, let me think the best way to get in here. So I can probably tuck the blade in there, like that. And I'll come in this way, I can bend that one backwards and forwards. That's another way. So with a full etched piece, you can also do the old waggle backwards and forwards and you chop that. Right, so both these parts now have um, potentially little bits sticking out, the old the tabs. And what you want to do with these is literally just go around and then put the blade up against, or use your snips now, up against the piece and just snip, snip. Okay, what we're doing here is we're just effectively doing the starter cleaning up. So that's the, the tabs have gone for that piece. Uh, if you've got a half etched piece, you have to be a bit caref more careful because there's not an edge to go up against. So you've got to do it by eye uh, and you've got to get, you know, along the edge of the piece, really. You don't want to be cutting into it, okay? Cutting it now with the snips means you're much less likely to deform it. So you should have a nice, smooth, straight edge at the edge. I'm saying edge. <laughs> All the edges, here we go. So when I'm laying out the tabs on the artwork, I try to think about where to place them so that the parts don't deform too much during the etching process. So you might think I'll probably, why has he put so many on? But it's usually to try and stop the piece bending during the process or getting caught. Right. So we've used a craft knife and, uh, and a set of snips to chop out. What we need now is a Swiss file. So these are, this is probably the most expensive, or one of them, in terms of tool price, one of the most expensive things in my toolbox really. Uh, it's a proper Swiss file. Um, but I only use this file for cleaning up etched material before I solder it. I never use it on solder because you'll fill up your, you know, the, um, the indentations in the file. Okay, so you basically put it along the edge or hold your piece and just bring the file backwards and forwards along the edge. And what we're trying to do, just lightly, we're just trying to eliminate any sign of the tabs because that will, they will show up through your finish. They'll also potentially interfere with how the kit goes together. So we just, we go, and the beauty with working with something like this is, uh, with metal is that you can see when you hold up the piece to the edge and you're looking at the edge, you can see the difference between where the tabs are and where the, um, where you haven't touched with the file. And as you file it, and then you look at it, you can still see the difference. So it's a really good way. You just keep looking until it all looks the same, basically. You don't need to, especially with a half etch material, you don't need much. Always um, file along it, never across it. If you file, if I filed this way, I'd very, very quickly distort the material. You'd end up with the right mess. So only ever file, uh, file along it like this. Okay, so that's that one done. And we'll do this, but this is a full etched piece. Um, it has a fold line on the back of course, because that's the cab roof. So it's going to bend slightly and sit on the cab roof. But what we want to do is get rid of the uh, the tab marks on it. So we'll do the same thing, drag it backwards and forwards. Okay, and you'll see these little tabs disappearing. Um, sometimes with a full etched piece of find you have to not only do the edge like that, but you roll the file onto the underside where the tab was and that will definitely get rid of any sign of it. Okay, there you go. So I've just done two pieces there, but what I'm going to do now uh, off camera is prepare all the other parts on this fret likewise so that I've got everything ready to start the assembly process. Okay, so I've uh, gone through each part uh, of the etch now and I've cut them out and cleaned them out. Actually, I did that one before, so I don't mind showing you that. So there you go. All prepared and ready. I've also checked their fit against the model which you guys uh, probably don't really need to do, but it, it's not bad to just to sort of place parts and see how they feel when you place them on um, to check how you know it's going to assemble. Okay, so 
uh, I had a go at doing that too. So um, usually the instructions will tell you which order uh, to put the etches on. Uh, I've not actually written the instructions for this yet, so I'm just going to sort of work it up as we go uh, with what seems a logical order to me. Um, but do have a look at the instructions for the motor rail when you see it uh, and go from that. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is start with the cab <clears throat> and I'm going to start with the cab front. I tend to use a, a gel type super glue. It gives you a little bit of working time in terms of it's not got quite the instant grab of the liquids. Uh, it also stays where you put it rather than rolling around. Um, but it is more fiddly to apply and you don't want to put too much on because it can squeeze out the sides. So I tend to find, you know, it's pros and cons, but on the whole, yes, much prefer this over the, the liquid uh, for, for this purpose. Okay, so I've placed a, a thin bead around that area. If there is too much uh, on after you put it on, you can wipe the edge with your finger. I know that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But uh, it washes off with soap and water. So I've, I've put that on, lined it up, and I've just pushed it down. And then I'm going to use the, the knife blade just to make sure it's home along the bottom edge. Okay. So I'm going around checking it's in place. Okay. Now I've just noticed there's a, a little bit of uh, excess on the inside. So to, just to correct that, I'm just going to run the blade along through the roof gap. Make sure uh, I've got some of that out. It'll make putting windows in more difficult later. Okay. All right, onto the sides. I've already obviously noted that the cab door is at the back of the cab. There's another piece that goes in here, so I'm just going to make sure I get rid of the spilt super or the excess squeezed out super glue uh, along this join here. Okay. If you're wondering why is he balancing the super glue in the same place over and over before he starts moving it's because you're squeezing from the bottom obviously like toothpaste um, and until it starts to come out you don't want to move away from that first spot okay Okay, so we've got the, the cab now assembled. I'm just going to check a prototype photo. I'm pretty certain I know which way I'm putting these yet. Just wanted to make sure that the uh, this um, strapped section goes at the top, which I was pretty sure it did. I know the door goes on this side, so that should fit into this space here. Make sure it fits before I put in. One. I'm just gonna make sure that edge there is clean. Okay. The beauty about this kit is that, um, unlike the Rustin, uh, that it there is plenty of space inside. So 
I mean, if you want to build up the weight of this to be the same as the Rustin, you can fill the bonnet with uh, with some lead. But if you wanted to fit sound, for example, you might have, and a stay alive, you might have to sacrifice the weight, but you've definitely got the space. Okay. So for this piece, I'm going to try and insert it into that join there and then at the bottom edge and then push home. And if it's all measured accurately, which it was obviously in CAD, then that fits exactly in the recess um, and the strapping edge is at the bottom of the angle perfectly without any messing around, okay? Right, same on this side. Not quite as exciting this side, it's a plain side. Still has the strapping along the top edge though. I'm going to do the bonnet front. in there. Okay, so far so good. Right, and now I think I'm going to put the buffer beams on. You could have probably done these first if you fancied. So here I'm not putting super glue all over it, but um, sort of spread out, I suppose, and around the edges. I mean, this stuff holds pretty well. I uh, tend to align along the bottom edge, but actually I think on this case I'm going to go off the top edge because I want to make sure those um, corners match up. And because it's a gel type, you'll get just a, a few moments where you can move it around to make sure it's about right before pushing it home into place. Okay. If you do have any spots where you get super glue on the body, do be careful with the half edge stuff, it's quite hard to get off, but here on the buffer beam I can easily uh, abrade that off shortly. And actually it's a good idea to abrade these buffer beams anyway, because then the, the paint will stick better. Okay, and I'll do the back one. And then I'm not going to fit the cab roof because I want to be able to put uh, some windows in that, so I'll paint that. Uh, through the process, work it separate, uh, and then I shall uh, glue it on with probably some PVA or something like that rather than super glue, in case I ever need to get it off at the end of the build. Okay, so now it's definitely looking like uh, like I'd expect. Right, I've now got this piece, which is the bonnet. There is a slight peak in it, um, and so to help you form that, there's a half etch line. Obviously, you don't want to go to town and give this a right bend, but you can just bend it between your fingers. The half etch line is big enough just to gently put a slight fold in that. Can you see that now? Yeah. Okay, so and I just want to check that against here because obviously it's going to be too big. It's going to look silly. So obviously, can you see there that that I've made that too big? So 
Now, if I want to lessen it, I can put it back on the bench and just push it that way. What I should have is a fold, but almost a flat piece, and then that will fit in that gap along the top there, okay? Yeah, so I'm gonna glue that into place now. This is the prototype etch, so um, what I might do on the production etch is put a half etched hole on the underside in case um, your particular prototype has an exhaust that exits through the bonnet. On this particular example, the exhaust exited down out the bottom of the frame, so there's, I mean, it's a very, very clean looking uh, design as a result. So I've got a tiny little squidge of super glue there and just nick that out. Okay. Now for completeness, we'll just do the cab the same way. Um, bend, that's obviously going to be too much. Place it on the bench, put it back. So that should, that will glue, glue on there uh, with super glue towards the end. Okay. And as you can see, the chassis is quite an easy fit in here. In terms of space, we've got all that space within the bonnet, either side of the chassis, to fit your stay alive, to fit weight, to fit a decoder. Um, so if you're worried about losing the uh, the match truck, I don't think you need to be overly concerned. Okay. All right. And then this is literally just a bush fit. So I'm just jiggling it around, obviously, because I'm trying to do this on camera through a funny angle. There we go. pushes up okay and then you just secure it with the uh, the Hornby screws okay I'm not going to push it quite home yet I want the buff beams to be fully dry um, but shortly I will come back and I will fit some of these handrails and bits and pieces just to finish the model off so we've now got a complete body here uh, with the roof obviously to go on after uh, the chassis is in uh, I've only screwed it in at the back at the minute, but you can see the Hornby screws are in there. Um, the next job is to form the handrails and door handles. And in your kit, you will be supplied a piece of, of wire. And you might be thinking, what on earth am I supposed to do with that? So I'm just, it's a very simple, straightforward way I use. Uh, and I'll talk you through that. Um, now, it is possible just to fit the handrails at the back of the cab into the cab, but they're just going to, they're likely to just to fall off uh, because the holes that would go into the frame. Um, now I don't preform the holes on the frame, it would make it very weak. So what you may need to do is, I've got a, a 0.4mm um, micro drill bit here uh, in my mini drill. And I'm just going to uh, very carefully drill out these holes. Um, you'll find the, um, the etch actually provides uh, a target for the drill, so it's a lot easier than you think. Uh, I tend to power my drill through the controller in my, um, it gives me a, a chance to change, alter the speed. So I tend to hold it with one hand and then use a finger on the, just above the chuck uh, to hold the drill as it comes down and I'm grasping the model with two fingers as well, uh, which holds everything steady and in place and gives me a bit more control, almost like you would with a pillar drill. And that's it, through once. So there, those two are done. And it's just these two on the other side as well. Okay, and I just noticed when I went over the edge that actually this front hole is a little bit small, so I'm just gonna pass the drill bit through that as well. Okay. So just give me a second now. I'm going to put the drill away so we don't bend the bits, drill bits, uh, and to get rid of that annoying hum. Okay. Uh, so what um, you'll need now is a pair of pliers, um, something to cut your wire. Um, you can use uh, sort of the bend backwards and forwards motion, which I tend to use sometimes, but it can be useful to, to snip them. So start by forming the 
the first bend. Um, I tend to suggest perhaps two or three mil, hold the first two or three mil in the pair of pliers and then just bend that over to 90 degrees in your thumb. So you should end up with, let me show that against my hand, you'll see there's a 90 degree bend there, okay? Place that 90 degree bend that you've done into the hole, the handrail hole, and then put the pliers where you want the next one to fold, but not quite just underneath where you think you need to, uh, just underneath the hole, which then as the wire bends round, it will actually then be in the right place. If you put the pliers exactly where the hole is, you'll end up with a handrail that's too long. It's a bit of trial and error, and I'm just using the, the I've got a habit of doing that, the, the bend backwards and forwards to snap the brass. Okay, and hopefully we'll find that first time is a charm, first time lucky. There we go, so that's in. So what I tend to do is I'll now go through the whole model uh, doing the same, but I will demonstrate one more for you. Of course, in this case, actually, there's only four handrails to form, uh, which is quite nice. So again, into the hole, because these have got the plastic framing behind, they're a little bit more resistant to pushing in, but they'll be okay once they're formed. I don't want to force it yet, so. That's a good match. I say because I've drilled the holes behind these at point four, these should be a tight fit. Um, actually, I might need to spin these holes out actually to point five. Let's have a look. So, because the holes are already formed, it's quite straightforward. I just use a set of uh, twist drill bits, but I find the smaller ones don't like the twist, uh, the handle, so I tend to still use the, the mini drill, but just to spin it by hand. So if I just hold that over, and just spin it by hand over the hole. We should make short work of it because we've gone through once already. Here we go. piece this handrail matches the spacing it was just not it was just not pushing into the uh, frame behind okay so what we'll do is we'll go around we'll do the other side um, and I'll show you how to do handles as well so uh, let me just get the other two handles formed first Okay, so I've made all four of these. There's one that's fallen out there. Um, the next job is how to do door handles or latches. Same principle. We take the brass wire, we hold a piece in the jaw, we fold it, we form our 90 degree bend. And then we think about how long we want the handle to be. And I grip it uh, with the pliers, bending it backwards and forwards to snap. And you can cut it, but that does seem to provide a and just as easy a, a process. And so I'm holding the um, the handrail in the pliers, and I'm going to take my Swiss file again. I'm just going to drag the face of that handle backwards and forwards along there, like so. And I'm putting effectively a flat on it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that in there. Whether it's going to catch the light, but effectively you've got a flat edged rod now uh, which looks a lot more like a door handle and then that can just be slotted into place and we'll super glue it now okay so I'll take that out Thank you. a blob of glue And hold it in place. 
okay and make the door handle and we follow the same process for gluing in the, the handle so obviously hold them about in the middle of the handrail apply a blob of super gel type super glue uh, to each end place it in one end of the handrail just for the top now and just because the beauty of the gel is of course that they've got a chance to to move it around before it sets so what we want to do is to get it a nice straight uh, handle handle but we also want a consistent gap to the body as well so I'm using a blade here just to edge it out to make sure visually it's the same top to bottom okay so now I'm going to go around the rest of the model uh, and do the same thing. So here we have it, the uh, the finished model. This roof is going to fall off any second now, it's not attached. Okay, so as I say, um, I tend to leave the roof off on these kits because although it's possible to glaze it by uh, fitting the glazing through the hole in the floor before you fit the chassis, uh, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to fit it through the, through the opening in the top and then just glue this in place. And there is a ridge all the way around the roof formed of the 3D printed material, which means you get a pretty good uh, pretty good hold on that. Although I would recommend using something like um, PVA uh, rather than uh, super glue, just so that you don't uh, damage your paintwork after you've finished. So you can see the, the handrails are all on, uh, little door latches and things. I've also um, just pushed in, these only push fit at the minute, some RT models, 18 inch uh, buffers here. And um, the kit's designed for either these RT models, 18 inch ones, or their larger 24 inch industrial buffers, depending on the look you're after. Um, I've not provided an NEM coupling uh, mount in the, in the buffer beam, uh, simply because I think it'll spoil the look of such a tiny little model. But the uh, underneath here, you'll see that the Hornby uh, plug for attaching your match truck, if you need it, it is still available at both ends. If you do want to fit the NEM, uh, then I just suggest omitting this nickel silver buffer beam. Just make sure the uh, the 3D print in that area is very smooth, uh, and you'll you'll get away with that, and that'll allow you to fit your the coupling of your choice. Um, there is a, a slot formed that goes through the print on the etch for a Smith three link, and that's my choice of coupling in this scale. If you do want to use tension locks, but you want to keep this clean look, then you could add a piece of like 0.4, 0.5 mm wire um, underneath the uh, mount it behind the faces of the buffer beam uh, behind the faces of the uh, of the buffer sorry uh, and then just bend that to match your tension lock height so there you have it uh, hopefully um sharing the assembly of this has really encouraged you to to have a go it's a real kit it's not just a uh, a plonk on body 3d printed body with all the detail you actually feel like you've made something and literally making something in your hands and uh, and seeing it come together is quite an enjoyable pastime anyway but the actual act of cutting parts out smoothing them making sure they fit cleaning things up um, put on some nice music it's really relaxing and, and in this day and age i think i think we could all do with that from time to time uh, so yeah i really look forward to seeing what you guys do with it so please do share photos with us on our facebook page uh planet industrials which is on uh, you'll find if you search on facebook um i actually uh, make custom uh, commission model makers so I do all sorts of things as well as designing kits uh, and being part of the Planet Industrials team so there's more videos like this on my channel if you search on YouTube for uh, James Hilton Custom Model Railways so yeah please do like and subscribe this share it with your friends um, yeah the kit if it's not available as you watch this it will be available shortly um, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the next step of this journey and uh, and encourage you all to have a go because at the end of the day you know for me model model making is is a fantastic hobby and i focus my model making on trains i'm sure there's lots of people who do other things but you know the actual art of making things it goes beyond collecting and it turns our love of railways and model railways in particular uh, into a, a much i don't know more wholesome wide uh, ranging hobby something that i really really do love and enjoy and so i hope my energy and passion does come across and it's something that you want to get into as I said at the beginning, if you've got any questions um, about techniques or methods or materials or where you get things from, then just leave comments on this video and I will do my best to answer them, um, uh, even if it takes me a couple of days to spot that there's been a question posed. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Uh, take care out there uh, and uh, yeah, we'll speak to you all. We'll see you all soon.